So yeah, you hold it there. It's just gonna be an overframe. And what I did was I, basically that's a 10 foot overhang, 10 foot by 10 foot, perfectly square. So I just went, leveled up a line there and came over to a mark. So this should be mathematically right where the, right where the valley's gonna be. Should all point in right there. Okay, now I got some math to do and some figuring to do. I got 5 8 sheeting, it's 11 16 extra. Mathematically, I'm gonna do 5 8 rise. 90 minus 18.5, 71.5 pitch, zero inch, 5 8. You can do this the easy way or the hard way, I guess. Should be nice to do it the easy way though, Zach. Okay, three nine and a half. -er. So that's that. Then what I need to do, Zach. Basically what I'm doing is I'm making a rafter to go from there to down there to support the weight of these purlins to come all the way over. So, so I'm do simple math, but complicated process, I guess. I need seven three and three eighths. How big was that? Seven seven and a half. Hell yeah. I just gotta put a 412 bevel on it, and what it should do is come out just in this area somewhere and then my purlins can come right over top of it so uh, why don't you go all the way all the way out yeah because i got to keep it down so my purlins come on top my purlins are three and a half they're going to run all the way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut my purlins those are two by six purlins due to the distance and then these are going to be pitch cut two by fours that are going to lay out on this roof. Once I figure one out, these other things are gonna be easy. Why don't you go ahead and get get that two by six up there, Zach, and it should just fit, and then we'll have to fill into that post there with an eight footer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want some good stuff there. All right, so I think I have a game plan. Basically, we snapped a line for this valley, but what I gotta do is I gotta put a a rafter drop down for my purlins to go over it, kind of like we do the rest of our building. And I gotta do the math to uh, to accommodate for the sheeting and everything to plane in nice and clean. So what I did was my goal, this purlin that runs right here, this rafter is gonna sit on top of it and the weight is gonna be dispersed and transferred to this valley. There's a truss right underneath here. And so this rafter is just really supporting this span of trusses. I wanted to cut it down and the purlins will run right over top of this. So what I've got is this line I determined based on two foot in, because it's a two foot overhang, so this purlin's running right at two foot. And based on rise run and all that good stuff, I should be able to set this just like so. I'm perfect up there on my mark. I'm right here, pitch looks good. So what I'm gonna do is just tack a GRK screw here. Of course someone's gonna call me. That's beautiful. I can run those purlins. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more framing here. I think what I'm gonna do too is right underneath this is that door jam that goes to the foundation. I'm gonna run a board up so that it adds some support to that purlin right where that weight is transferring. Anything that's a good idea? I do. I think it's worth. I think it's worth it. Above the line. We just need to get hangers on these. All right, now, if my math is correct, these purlins um, should continue on a nice, perfect plane for the from the pavilion roof to the valley that goes into the garage roof. And now all I gotta do is cut some two by four purlins with the proper compound miter to not only take into account my 412 pitched roof, but also the, I do believe, 43.49 degree pitch of that angle going up to the, uh, on that valley. So, whew, take that back. 
I'm gonna be cutting a 412 bottom cut to lay on the roof and a, let's see, is that correct? I don't know, I always get mixed up with what angle is what, so I always have to make a test cut. And that's okay because I do this like a couple times a year and I always have to do at least one or two and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's easy. I can, I can do the rest of these, no problem. And thankfully this job has multiple valleys and hips, so I'll use this knowledge on the next one. So if my math is correct, what I've got is two lines. I've got my valley line, but then I also did some math to calculate where the tops of these are gonna plane into this sheeting. That way when I put my 5 8 zip sheeting on top of that, the plane should be right here. Um, math never lies, but sometimes you mix up the, uh, the actual formulas or the angles you're using. So I just like to double check everything, make sure it's right because I hate rework. I'd rather spend a couple minutes now doing the math than just trying to eyeball, figure it out, and then realize my cut's off and have to make new cuts. So I'm gonna go cut these purlins. If I pitch cut these correctly, they should die right into my marks. Now, you may be looking at that valley set and thinking, what in the heck? Well, post frame, it's a little bit unique. Um, you know, I got that rafter right underneath of it. That's gonna be supported down to the foundation um, with some framing all the way down. And then we've also got the trusses underneath that plywood or zip sheeting. Uh, really, the whole point of this process was I wanted some nice solid structure under the valley so when we run our tin and our valley pan, it can't flex in between the pearl. And so um, I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is gonna turn out great. I got a nice crisp line defined by math that never lies. And all of my cuts turned out really good, which is nice. Uh, next time I do the other side, it's gonna go even quicker. I'm pretty sure if at any point in your life you wanna just burn calories, maybe lose some weight, uh, do that CrossFit, or come out and do roof sheeting with some zip. It's, especially when it is so hot, you just feel your body melting. Can't drink water fast enough. camera stopped recording but that valley mm, everything everything turned out perfectly and uh, you know that all starts at the foundation quite frankly so if we don't lay out this building perfectly square and we don't you know plumb up our walls to the best of our ability and use correct measurements I mean it just goes the list goes on and on and uh, this valley was not determined by today's work or today's math or anything really that happened today. It was the weeks that have been building up to this moment so that when I did the math, 
uh, the math never lies, but if you don't do good carpentry work, then when you go to apply those mathematical formulas to your day, things don't work. And I'm just super happy because it worked out perfect. Ready? Born ready. I was just gonna do it if you're busy, but you got it. No, dude. I'm here, brother. Yeah, right there, man. So with uh, purlins like we have, where they're horizontal versus a vertical stud, um, and an eight foot bay between our trusses or rafters, the fascia can get a little squirrely. So as you can tell, we just run our sheeting wild. We know that each truss is straight, but in between it can get a little hairy. So all we do is run it wild, snap a line from end to end, we know it's good. And then we'll just take our square and we'll just kind of, see that? We'll just kind of push and pull it uh, to line up with that nice straight line. And then we know our fascia is gonna be mint. All right, take a look at that. We got the valley all done. Actually, we got this whole roof sheeted. All we gotta do is nail off that bottom row, but I just wanted to show you kind of how this valley went together. And you can see my snap line there. Well, maybe you can. So that snap line is the center of the valley based on mathematics. And you might be asking, why is your sheeting off the center? Well, because we want it to plane in to that valley center. So when I put my valley metal valley pan in here, that will be the center I shoot for, not necessarily that line right there. So on this side of the roof, roof, whatever, we're gonna use this new, uh, well this is like the wide uh, tape, and if you're looking at comparing it to the traditional zip flashing here you can see the difference between the two and then we've got this ultra wide roll that is for hips and valleys and it's 12 inches so you're definitely going to notice a lot of good coverage across the valley pan